Welcome to TNT Sports Talk. Today is Tuesday, July 31st. As always, we are presented by D's Home Cuts. I'm your host, Travis Karcheski, and it's just me today. Um, Truman is at a water park with some of his friends. Um, I guess, you know, somebody has to step up and do the show. You know, Truman's been missing a lot lately, but uh, I'm here. Uh, I'll be here for the, with just me for the rest of the show. we got a lot of topics we want to dive into. Uh, been a crazy weekend, especially in baseball. We're going to get to that a little bit later with the trade deadline ending today. Uh, I apologize if some of these moves, some of these big moves happen you know, while we're recording or after we're recording, but we just got to get the show up. We're going to give you a quick rundown of everything that has happened so far at the deadline, uh, but we're going to start with football because training camp is opening up. Um, yesterday was, I think the not yesterday, Sunday, I think was the last Sunday without football. We got the, tra- we got the Hall of Fame game coming up soon. Um, it's going to be exciting. Uh, we're going to dive right into it. Training camp, like I said, is one of the best times of all sports. You know, that's why the NFL is so different from basketball and baseball. Uh, baseball is a little bit like the same with spring training, but football. I mean, fans get pumped up for tra- for practices. You'll go to the, you know the Browns training camp, which I've been to, or the Packers, and it's just packed with people, fans you know, who just want to sit around and watch people practice, want to watch a practice, but um. It's really cool to watch. You get tons of storylines, but unfortunately, obviously, you get a lot of injuries, which we'll get into. Uh, but before that, wanted to start with our reviews. We're finishing up our reviews of teams. Uh, we're going to do the Falcons and the Panthers today in that NFC South. Uh, two pretty uh, exciting teams had two pretty good years last year, um, but that division last year was one of the best in all sports. Um, with you know the Saints, the Falcons, and the Panthers all you know winning 10 games or plus, you know. Uh, so it's going to be, I think, another tight division this year. I don't think the Buccaneers are going to give the top three guys any run, a run for their money, but uh, it's going to be a tough division again this year. We'll start with the Falcons. Again, two years removed from the Super Bowl. They went 10-6 and six last year, a little bit of a down year, especially for, you know, Julio Jones, who's widely regarded as a top five wide receiver. He had a little bit of a rough year last year. He's got a new OC there. Um but, and he's had, he had a lot of problems over the offseason with his contract, but I guess he is back in camp, so they got that all solved, which is huge for them. Uh, but like I said, 10-6 and six last year, and they didn't do a lot over the offseason. They didn't add a lot of talent um, in terms of free agency. Uh, they had a pretty solid draft going after Calvin Ridley, which was a bit of, su- of a surprise. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, and then Isaiah Oliver, the talent- talented cornerback out of Colorado, I believe, um, but they did lose a lot of key pieces. Taylor Gabriel was kind of their third option, and he was a guy who was just speed, just take the top off the defense, uh, and Matt Ryan would always hit him in stride for a nice long completion or a touchdown. Uh, and then they lost Donatary Poe, a defensive stud in that middle, that off, in that defense on that line, just clogging up that middle. Uh, that's going to hurt. And Claiborne, uh, Adrian Claiborne, who had, I think he had a six sack game, even though that was against, you know, the backup tackle with the Cowboys. But that's a lot of sacks. That's a lot of production you lost there. Um, and they didn't do a lot to make up for that. Um, but this defense is really solid. It's a solid defense. Adding Isaiah Oliver is going to help. Uh, it's a very young fast defense um i know the head coach there really you know tries to focus on that defense they had a pretty solid draft and that's why you know they got to the super bowl a couple years ago vic beasley is still a beast he's still that guy in the middle there uh i know they want to see a little bit more out of their first round draft pick a year ago mckinley uh out of ucla they want to see a little bit more out of him if he can step up into what you know people think he could be you got a pretty solid pass rushing combo there uh with beasley and him uh, this offensive line, they they re-signed Jake Matthews, not re-signed, they signed him to a contract extension, I think it's five years, $75 million. Um, he's a solid young left tackle, Alex Mack, one of the best centers in the game. Um, they they still have him there. They got a really solid wide receiver court, Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu. Uh, those are two of the better receiving combos in the league. And then you throw Calvin Ridley into that. That could be deadly. That could be scary. But losing Taylor Gabriel hurt. But Calvin Ridley, I think, is a guy who has the ability to make up for that. Um, I think he has the ability to be a number one receiver. Obviously, with Julio Jones, he's not going to be that in Atlanta. Uh, but maybe you know, a couple years from now, he just 
he becomes that number two. Maybe Sanu falls back to the third option, and Ridley is the third is the second guy there, um, and that could really help Matt Ryan. Uh, they have Devontae Freeman, one of the better running backs in the NFL, uh, and then they have Telvin Coleman, who I think you take Telvin Coleman and Devontae Freeman. That's one of the better one-two punches in the league. Um, you know this this division is full of one-two punches with you know Kamara, Ingram, uh, McCaffrey, and now C.J. Anderson, and then you add. Uh, Coleman and uh, Freeman. Uh, like I said, that's how the NFL is kind of turning. You know, there's no more of these workhorse type of running backs. It's more of a one-two punch type of system now. You need two, maybe even three guys like up in Green Bay. Um, but the Falcons have one of the best one-two punches in the league. And then what everybody needs to succeed in the NFL, they have us experienced Really good, solid quarterback in Matt Ryan, top ten quarterback, a guy I've loved for years now. Um, will he? It does he have the ability to step up in big moments? I think so. The Super Bowl hurt them a lot coming off of that. I don't. I don't think the ten and six record really uh, reflected how good and how much how much talent this team has. But I'm going to predict that they're going to do that again. I think they're going to do ten and six again. Um, I think they lost a lot, and I don't think they added enough to really make up for that loss in free agency. If Calvin Ridley can be a you know a beast, I think this team could be a lot better than ten and six. I think they'll be that Super Bowl contending team. Uh, and then obviously if Julio has a better year, this team I mean like I said, they were they should have won that Super Bowl. Uh, they blew it. So I mean this team is interesting because ten and six last year, that record does not reflect this talent, but I think ten and six is a solid uh, prediction for them next year. Um, I think the Panthers are going to fall a little bit. We'll get into that in a second. So I think 10-6 and 6 would get them into the playoffs, and I think they can make a run at the Super Bowl because they have the talent to do so. They had the talent to win it a couple years ago, and they, they blew it. Um, but 10-6, and 6, and we'll see what happens there. Now we're going to move to the Panthers. Another team, 11-5 and 5 last year, uh, three years removed from the Super Bowl, I believe. Uh, and they, they did a lot. They, they changed the dynamic of the team a little bit they added cj anderson got rid of jonathan stewart who was there for a long time uh but cj anderson i think is better than jonathan stewart i think he he was a thousand yard back maybe it was last year i don't know i forget but um he could be you know that first and second down guy and then you throw mccaffrey in there third down mccaffrey anderson you know special packages uh because i think mccaffrey's money is made in the receiving game uh he can rush a little bit but i think he is if he, you know, focuses solely on that, I think he could be the best receiving back in the NFL. Um, so you add that in there. They added Torrey Smith. You pair him along Funches, who Funches, Devin Funches, had a great year last year. Stepped up when they traded away Kelvin Benjamin, uh, who I think was kind of a cancer there. Uh, Funches stepped up, became that number one guy, and then you paired Torrey Smith, who I think could be. Uh, he, he's a really good, solid number two. I think he could be a number one option a couple years down the line if he really starts to get to get his targets. And then they added Don Terry Poe uh, from the Falcons, who, I like I said, I, I'm a big fan of Don Terry Poe. Uh, he's a guy who the last couple years, um, you know, he comes in on offense on the goal line. He's just a really athletic defensive lineman who can just sit up the middle and clog up that running game, which they need to do, like I said, playing in that south with backs like Freeman, Kamara, Ingram, uh, you know, now they got Ronald Jones there with the Buccaneers. I mean, this team, this division is full of really good running backs, and to have a guy like Don Terry Poe stuffing that line would really help. But they did have a huge loss, two huge losses now. Uh, Andrew Norwell uh, was their guard there for a long time. They lost him to the Jaguars. He was, you know, first team all pro, I believe, one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL. They lost him. Uh, Kind of hard to keep a guy who went he went to the Jaguars is now the highest paid guard in NFL history, so it's kind of hard to keep him. But that was a huge loss for him. They just lost Daryl Williams, second team All Pro uh, offensive lineman. So two big guys they've lost. Daryl Williams he got hurt in training camp. I forget his injury; it's not as severe, but I think six to eight weeks. So that's going to hurt. And if he's dealing with that all season, that's going to hurt even more. Um. So this offensive line is pretty shaky, um, but they did have they did add DJ Moore in the draft. So DJ Moore coming out of Maryland, I believe. Uh, Steve Smith, the longtime Panther great, said he's one of the best receivers he's ever you know watched, scouted. Uh, so if he can come in and be something, then this this offense could you know 
benefit from that, adding C.J. Anderson. And then this defense, one of the better defenses in the NFL. The secondary is shaky. Um, they added Cockrell over the offseason, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, one of the uh, kind of a quiet, underachieving corner, uh, underrated corner, if I would say. Um, but we'll get into that in a second because he broke his leg, I guess, in training camp. Um, so that hurts. So the secondary is probably the biggest weakness of this team, and they didn't do that much to address that this offseason. I know they brought in Breland, signed him, but uh, he failed his physical, so they got rid of him. Uh, so they kind of had a loss there in the secondary. But if they can get some consistency in that secondary, you know, Luke Keekley, top five defensive player, top ten NFL player, um, one of the best linebackers ever right now if he keeps doing what he's doing. Um, and then, like I said, Cam Newton, that's all you need is a solid quarterback. And Cam Newton is that. Um, I think as the years progress, he's going to need to transition more into a pocket passer. He can't do what he used to do with his feet anymore, uh, especially with injuries. Um, so I think if he can, you know, kind of step back and be, you know, a pocket passing type of guy, this team has a very high ceiling. Um, but though not addressing the cornerback position in the offseason hurts a lot. And I think this team goes nine and seven. I think that division is too good. Uh, I think the Falcons are going to be better this year, even though I gave them the same record prediction. But I think 9-7, and seven, I think they missed the playoffs. Again, a solid year. I like Riviera as their head coach, a solid year. Um, but they just they need to address that cornerback position, and they didn't really do it. And that's going to hurt them a lot. And they, you know, they lost Kirk Coleman to the Saints. He was a guy there for a long time. Um, decent safety, and they, they don't have him anymore. So they're going to need to find some consistency in the secondary. And if they do that, I think they'll be better. But 9-7 and seven for me right now. Um, until they address that cornerback position. So that's it for it there. We're going to finish up with the South. We're going to do the Saints, one of my favorite teams in the league. We're going to do the Saints on Thursday, and then we'll move to the West. I think we're going to do the Cardinals, uh, or maybe the 49ers. I'm not sure. Um, but like I said, training camp is starting up, and obviously with training camp becomes injuries. Every year you get terrible, terrible injuries that just put teams back. Especially, you know, when guys get free agents or, you know, rookies who go down for the whole year, it hurts. And it's just a gut punch to any NFL fan, even if you're not a fan of the team. And I know every year teams say, you know, oh, our team has the worst injury luck. But there is no team that has a, there's no team has it worse than the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers, every year, it seems like they, this team has so much talent, so much young good talent and every year somebody gets hurt multiple guys get hurt and this team just goes down keenan allen has been dealing with injuries uh they had mike williams dealing with injuries last year they're talented rookie out of clemson forrest lamp first round pick uh he's been he missed out the whole year last year and i guess he's still dealing with injuries now um and then jason verrett who i think is one of the better young corners in the game and i think he has, has the ability to be a pro bowl type of corner but he just can't stay on the field and he got hurt again I'm not sure what the extent of the injuries are, but I injury is, but I guarantee I, I bet it's pretty bad um, if he gets carted off and you know reports are it's pretty bad right now. He might miss the whole year, and you know that's just a killer because you pair Jason Verrett with uh, Hayward on the outside, and then you put Bosa and Ingram in that middle. Quarterbacks are going to be terrified, but now you know Novarett. Hopefully, Derwin James can kind of make up for that. And then, you know, they lost Hunter Henry, one of the better young tight ends in the NFL. This team has just been dealing with injuries a, a lot. And they have one of the most talented young rosters in the NFL. And these guys just can't stay healthy. And that just kills them. So my heart goes out to Panther, to Charger fans because, you know, the Packers have had their share of injuries over the last couple of years. But I think the Chargers have it the worst out of anybody. Um, but a couple other injuries, Garrett Bowles, uh, I guess he hit his head really hard on the ground the other day with for the Broncos. Garrett Bowles, first-round draft pick, uh, a tackle. Um, that uh, that hurts a lot for the Broncos. I know they need some offensive line help. And Garrett Bowles is a really good talent, great story, um, and it sucks. You know, Hopefully he'll be back. Obviously concussion right now isn't too bad. It should be maybe a week or two depending on severity. But, you know, let's say he gets a concussion – you know, week six, you know, that's two concussions in the span of three months. I mean, he's got he's got his money. He was a first-round draft pick. 
Um, and I don't blame him if he decides to hang it up like a couple of guys have done. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, Packers, Jake Ryan, starting linebacker, he went down. Kentrell Bryce in a contention for a starting safety job. He went down. That hurts a lot. Um, Russ Cockrell, like I said, broke his leg. Pretty severe, I guess. People were praying um, on the field because of that, and it was, I guess it was pretty severe. He'll be done for a couple weeks. He has to get surgery. Um, that hurts, like, two because he was a free agent, a guy they wanted to bring you know, some consistency to that secondary, which they haven't had in a long time since you know Josh Norman. Uh, and the Steelers, they got away with one. I mean, Ramon Fo- Raymond Foster, um, he got carted off on Friday, I want to say. Uh, and he, like I said, all-pro guard cog in that middle of that Steelers offensive line. Um but I guess he'll be okay. It's just a hyperextended knee, which is not too severe. He should be back week one, maybe. But it's just going to keep happening. Um, you can't prevent it. You can't change things. When you know injuries happen, it's football. Injuries are going to happen. Uh, and you just, you know, every year when training camp starts, you, even OTAs, you just pray to God that none, that none of your big guys go down with severe injuries like an ACL, Achilles, something like that, broken leg, broken arm, because that hurts a lot, and uh, it's just a gut punch to NFL fans, because now you're struggled, you know, young guys got to step up, and sometimes they don't, sometimes they do, sometimes you find, you know, some dogs who were just sitting back in the death chart because, you know, Guys were starting in front of them, but now they finally get their opportunity. So it's a good opportunity for young guys, but it hurts. Obviously, you hate to see guys like Jason Verrett, Russ Cockrell, Garrett Bowles, you know, stuff like that. You hate to see those guys go down. Um, but, you know, some positive news, you know, Tyler Eifert, I guess he's okay now. He is practicing you know, with no limits, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, when he's healthy, he's a top three tight end. He has just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Uh I always, you no, know, I drafted him last year in fantasy because I thought he'd be back, and it's a steal. I got him with the last, second to last pick or something like that. Um, but when he's healthy, he's one of the better young tight ends in the NFL. Not young, I guess. Uh, but we'll see what happens. If he can stay healthy, that's a huge addition for the Bengals. Um, but don't hold your breath on that because when people think he's healthy, he usually gets hurt again. Uh, but tight ends, it's tough to stay healthy if you're a tight end because you just get pounded uh, by linebackers and safeties going right up the middle. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But sticking in training camp, if you did not see the video of Chandler Jones breaking that sled yesterday, you need to stop, pause the, pause the podcast, go onto your Twitter and look, at, look it up. You should have seen it. It was everywhere. Chandler Jones, one of the best defensive players in the NFL, just destroyed a sled yesterday. Completely bent a metal sled, took the entire tackling dummy off its hinges, and just barreled through it. It was one of the most exciting videos I've seen in a long time. Uh, And that just got me ready for football. I cannot wait for football. Everybody, you know, has been waiting for this uh, for a long time. We just can't wait to get back on the field. And that just video, that pumped me up right there. Because, I mean, I played high school football. And a sled is, I mean, it's tough to even move those things. To break it with your hands, uh, just raw power is insane. And, I mean, if I'm an offensive lineman, I'm shitting myself because that's that's scary. Uh, that first punch. And that w- that's what makes Chandler Jones one of the best players in the league. To break a sled is insane. I mean, I know a lot of people, a lot of listeners, a lot of our listeners played high school football. They know, you know, when coach gets that sled out, that's pretty scary because it's heavy and it's just annoying to move and you know you're just grinding it out and to get you know a first punch just bam and just break the thing off its hinges uh that's 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 scary um so we'll see uh i want more of those videos you can just inject those videos right into my veins i mean those are fun to watch uh training camp videos are so much fun to watch because they're not game videos but it's like it's right there you know you're it's the the second best thing to actual game tape is watching training camp videos one on ones offensive line defensive line guys just going at it cornerback wide receiver battles it's one of the more exciting things in the NFL so keep them coming NFL we want to see more sleds being bent breaking off its hinges because that sh- that just gets me ready for football season uh and then 
A story that came out this morning, actually, Stephon Diggs signed a five-year deal extension with the Vikings, going to stay there, uh, $14 million a year, top wide receiver money, he deserves it. He's only 24 years old, which shocked me, he was a fifth-round pick, so an absolute steal for the Vikings, um, kind of makes up for that, you know, Treadwell, first-round pick, Treadwell hasn't been anything, um, I don't think he even has a touchdown in his career yet, um, but they really get Diggs in the fifth round, and he's... He's right up there, top 15 wide receiver. Um, I know we throw out, you know, top, you know, 15, top 10 guys, but he is a top 15 receiver. Um, and you pair him alongside Thielen, as obviously as a Packer fan, that's not something I like to see on the field, Thielen and Diggs, and I'm, I'm kind of pissed that he's going to be there for five more years. Uh, but he deserves it, $14 million a year. Uh, we're going to get into Diggs a little bit later in the show because we do have a what would have happened. Um, but we're going to move now to baseball. We're going to talk some deadline. But before that, I want to remind you that our show is brought to you by A's Lawn Service. Uh, since 2014, A's has been providing professional landscaping to many homes around Northeast Ohio. By using professional equipment, A's constantly strives to provide families with professional landscaping at a low and fair price. Turn to A's, and trust me, your lawn and your home will never look better. Trust A's for all your landscaping needs, and you will never be disappointed. The phone number is 330-241-2392. Again, 330-241-2392. Uh, and the email is lawnservice.a's at gmail.com. We say it every week. You know, Stop being dragged around by these bigger landscaping companies. Turn to A's. He's a high school kid, college kid now. Um, you know, he's just trying to make some money here, and he does a great job. He has a group of guys that I know. A lot of these guys I know, I played football with. They do a really great job working on your home, and they take pride in their work. Um, I know people are nervous hiring, you know, high school kids, college kids to do the, their lawn, but these guys do a really great job. They have professional equipment, so turn to them. It's cheap pricing, um, competitive pricing with the bigger guys, and you'll get you know, that special touch because this is a small, you know, time company. So turn to A's, and trust me, you'll not be disappointed. A's Lawn Service, LLC, you grow it, we cut it. So baseball, trade deadline, one of the more exciting, I think baseball trade deadline is the most exciting trade deadline in all sports because it just happens so quickly. Um, you know, you get that first big domino, that Machado deal, that Brad Hand deal, and it just starts to fall. And every day, you know, your team, if they're contending, they're grabbing somebody. If they're not, they're selling somebody. Um, and you can kind of get a pick, clear picture of where teams want to go, where they expect to go. You know, are they going to make the playoffs this year? Then they're buying. Or if they're not, then they're just going to sell off some of their talent. So I'm just going to run through these moves really quickly because um, there's a lot of them. Uh, like I said earlier, in his past shows, relievers are probably the, the hottest commodity on the market because finding a good bullpen piece is critical in the playoffs. Uh, you saw that with Andrew Miller a couple years ago with the Indians. Uh, Terry Francona just used him and used him so well, and it just helped out this lineup, um, helped out the Indians so much. He was a huge reason why the Indians got to the World Series a couple years ago. So, like I said, Brad Brock was sent to the Braves, uh, 4.85 ERA, kind of high, but he was an all-star last year, um, and the Orioles are just giving away anything that they can get right now. That's why I would see Adam Jones being moved here within the next couple hours. Again, I apologize if you're on listening on to 12 Ounce, because you're listening to this on Wednesday, and we haven't really... Uh, you know, it's I'm recording this at 11, so there's going to be a lot more moves going on later in the day. I think some big names are going to be moved. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but Robert Ozuna, Ozuna, probably the biggest name traded so far. Looking down my list, yeah, I would say so. He's only 23 years old. He was an All Star last year. He's one of the best young relievers in baseball. Uh, going to the Astros, that's really going to help. But he was suspended uh, uh, for a couple months for domestic abuse. He's not going to be back until August 5th. Um, that long of a break is it's a high risk if I'm the Astros, but again, they need the, they need the bullpen help. And if Robert Ozuna can come back and be even half of what he used to be, that's a huge ad right there. Um, I don't like Robert Ozuna, like I said, domestic abuse. Um, but he is a pretty good bullpen arm. Um, and the Astros can use him, uh, if he comes back to his full form on August 6th. Um, the Mariners, they've been making a couple moves. I know Truman talked about they're trying to get to the playoffs. They added Zach Duke and Adam Warren, two really good bullpen pieces. Zach Duke has a 3.6 ERA, and Adam Warren has a 2.7 ERA. Um, two really good bullpen guys. Um, 
that they got on a cheap, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, but they're gonna they're making a run at the playoffs now. You can see, uh, and the bullpen was a huge addition for them. They really needed to work on that and add two really good relievers is going to help. Uh, the Yankees they added Lance Lynn uh, for I think Tyler Austin and another guy. Tyler Austin's a good prospect uh, and to add Lance Lynn who has a five ERA five point one ERA. Um, that's kind of strange to me, but. Starting pitching is a hot commodity on the market, the trade deadline market, and there isn't a lot of it this year. I know Archer is the big name. I don't, I don't think he's going to get moved. Don't quote me on that. I don't believe he will get moved at the end of the day. But I guess you know Lance Lynn is just another starting option. He's been better as of late, and the Yankees do need a little bit more help in that starting rotation. Uh, again, the Braves making moves. Like I said, they added Brad Brock earlier. They added Adam Duvall. Uh, you know he's. Two-time All-Star, 2016-2017 uh, from the Reds. He's only batting 205, but he's got 21 home runs. They gave up a lot for him. Uh, I don't have the names in front of me right now, but when I was researching this, they gave up two really good prospects uh, for him. So this is a little bit of an interesting move because if I'm the Braves, I'm sticking with that young talent. Adam Duvall, he's young, but he, I mean, he's batting 205. He's got the power with 21 home runs. We've seen that. He was in the home run derby. Um but it's kind of strange for me to add a guy like Duvall, who's batting, like I said, barely over 200, and you you give up two really good young prospects for him. That's strange to me, but you know we'll see what happens. Adam Duvall is a guy who I think could add a lot of power to a lineup that really needs it. You know the Braves don't have a ton of power, but we'll see. And then the Red Sox always active at the deadline. It seems like every year they just trade for a big name guy. Um, and they got Ian Kinsler this year. Having a bit of a down year, only batting 240. He's got 13 home runs, so a little bit of power. But this is just because, you know, Dustin Pedroia, his injuries, I guess, is scaring him a little bit. Uh, they want somebody who can replace him. Uh, they added Nunez last year, who's struggling right now. Um, so Ian Kinsler, veteran guy, going to be a free agent, just a rental. Uh, six months, not six months, uh, three month rental. Uh, hopefully, a guy who can add you know some power and some consistency to that middle infield because uh, they've been struggling with that this year. Now the Pirates, which is a team you don't really expect it to be a buyer, you expect them to be a seller. Now shout out Johnny Glad. Uh, they added Keon Kel Kalia. I, I can't pronounce his name from the Rangers. Uh, somebody I really wanted the Indians to get because he's really young and he's under contract for two years. He only has a he has a three point four ERA uh, and twenty four saves, um, which is really good for a two year. You know, you bought this guy for two years. The Pirates, I like this move a lot because they added to that bullpen who already has Felipe Vasquez, one of the better young relievers in baseball, all star guy. Um, so they're. I don't think this is a move where they're saying, oh, we're buying, we're going to go after it, try to get the playoffs this year. This is a move for next year. This team has a lot of young talent. They're going to rebuild quickly, I think. You know, they have a they have some solid guys. They have a veteran and they have a veteran catcher in Cervelli and a veteran infielder in Harrison, who I don't think they're going to trade. Um, this team has a lot of young talent, a lot of young starting talent pitching wise, uh, which is good, which is what you need if you want to rebuild. So to add to now have two really good bullpen options, a setup guy like Keon and then a closer like Vasquez, that's going to help in a couple years down the line when they are ready to compete. Um, so we'll see what happens. That's all the moves I have right now. I, I'm not looking at my phone right now, uh, and I guarantee you there's moves being talked about right now. Uh, it's a busy day for GMs, and I think the team that's getting the most calls right now is the Washington Nationals. Reports came out last night that they're – open to trading Bryce Harper. Uh, I know a couple teams are in the mix uh, for him, my Cleveland Indians, which if you know me, I, I talked a little bit of crap about Bryce Harper. I don't think he should have been an all-star, but I love Bryce Harper. He is one of my favorite players outside of the Indians. He makes baseball fun to watch. I know he's only batting like 220. He's been better as of late, which I think why you know they're trying to trade him right now. Um, he's a free agent after the year, so I don't think the Nationals are going to get to the playoffs. So to start trading away a guy like Harper, you can get a lot for him, even though he's only batting 220. He is a franchise-level player when he's on his game. If the Indians could somehow find a way to grab him, I would. I don't need anything else in this world. I mean, that would be insane. I don't want them to trade away Shane Bieber, who's probably their top pitching prospect right now. Um, that's the only guy I would think is untouchable. I could see them trading away 
you know, a lot of younger talent that we have in the farm system. I know we got rid of Mejia, but we do have a lot of young talent that I could see us trading away, um, which I'd be okay with because we need some offense. We need some outfield consistency. We need some a little bit more power in that lineup. And Bryce Harper is a guy who teams do not want to pitch to, even though he's only batting 220. He is not somebody that a manager says, go out there and give him three good strikes. He, they're not going to do that. Um, and like I said, he makes baseball fun to watch. He sells tickets. Teams want to go see that. They want to see that in the playoffs. MLB wants him in the playoffs. Um, so I think if the Indians can get that done, that's huge. I think the Yankees are in contention there. The Cubs. Um, he's a rental. He's only going to be there for three, four months. But I mean, he he could really help out. And the Indians are a team where at earlier, you know, two thousand. 15, 16, they weren't a team that was going to go out there and trade for guys. But as of late, um, they have, you know, made splashes at the deadline. And, you know, I, I see the Indians, the Astros, and the Yankees, all three making a trade today for a bat. Everybody wants a bat. McCutcheon is a name out there right now. Adam Jones and Bryce Harper. I could see th one of those three guys ending up on the Indians uh, at the end of the day today. Um, so if Bryce Harper, that happens, Truman's going to have to shut his mouth because I'm that's going to be insane, and I'm going to be talking all about it on Thursday. But we'll see what happens because the deadline is over at the end of the day today. So keep up, keep you know scrolling through Twitter. Ken Rosenthal, give him a follow. He's the Woj of baseball. Uh, he's going to be tweeting uh, as soon as it happens because I guarantee you, it's going to be, there's going to be some names moved today. Um, but that's it right now. We're going to move to basketball. But before that, I want to remind you that our show is brought to you by D's Home Cuts. D's is the best place around Northeast Ohio for a great haircut at a low price. For only $7. $7 for a haircut. That's the cheapest haircut you'll find. And he'll give you a haircut and he'll style it with his own product. Truman and I have been getting a haircut at D's for the last couple months. And we have never looked or felt better. You get, you're going to get a professional cut every time you go into the shop. I know it's a little sketchy sometimes. You think walking in... Uh, to it, you know, the basement, but he's, it's such a professional setup. He's got professional equipment, professional barber's chair, and it's only $7 and you're going to get a fantastic cut. He knows what to do to make you look good, to make you look your best. The cuts get better every single time because he is always upgrading his equipment. Uh, you're going to get in this, you're going to go up to his house. You're going to get, a, you know, you're going to get a small time, small company type of cut, small, you know, Dom cares. He really wants to provide you with the best type of haircut that he can give you. And it's only $7. You're going to sit in the chair. You're going to feel comfortable. You, know, you can play, you know, Fortnite. You can play Madden. You can listen to music um, while he cuts his hair. So you're not just sitting there, you know, going on and on you you're doing something you know you're having fun dom is great at what he does he has a very 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 good talent for this so give him a shot you can find his find his instagram at these home cuts set up an appointment it's really easy to set an appointment go in there get a haircut pay your seven dollars an hour later you walk out feeling better than you ever have before and you had a great time while you're doing it um don't waste your money at like a sports clips where they're just going to go as quickly as they can because they want to get through as many cuts as they can dom cares he'll sit you down he'll spend an hour cutting your hair and while you're doing it you'll be playing Fortnite, listening to music um it's a great time trust me it's fun I know haircuts are kind of annoying sometimes, but this is a really, really fun time. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. These home cuts, professional haircuts at a low price. So basketball, I had some trouble finding some stories on basketball because, honestly, we are reached that point now after the draft, after free agency, where you know, Clint Capella signed with the Rockets, uh, you know, the last free agent to fall, last big guy to fall. We're still waiting on Dwayne Wade. Um, Reports are that he's thinking of retirement, which would kind of suck because Dwayne Wade's a really good player. Um, and I w I'm surprised the Heat don't want to bring him back. But when you're looking for stories for ba basketball, um, really the only guy you can go to is LeBron, who typically I do not like LeBron at all. I don't, I don't much care for him. I think he's kind of a cocky type of player. Uh, kind of annoying. I can get into that later. We have before, but he did something that I got to give him props. He opened up a school for you know lower class children in third and fourth grade. He opened up a school in Akron, which uh, we live about 30 minutes from Akron, so that's cool to see. Uh, you know, I know I was reading online. It's free. Uh, he's offering, you know, tuition for college for kids who graduated school. He's given them free bikes. He's given the parents of these kids, you know, job opportunities, GEDs type of stuff. Um, 
like I said, free bikes, free food, free transportation to the school. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Using your platform for something good like that is something that, you know, a lot of athletes should take a page out of LeBron's book. I got to give the man credit. He really did it. He really, you know, stepped up. Um, when most people view athletes just as, you know, prima donna, you know, people just like to spend their money on, you know, chains and cars and houses. But he really stepped up and he built this school and it's just going to do, it's going to do nothing but help the community. Uh, I don't think you, you can really find a negative um, annotation, a negative storyline for this school. It was just a great job and I got to give the guy props. You know, that's it for basketball because there's not much going on, but you have to talk about that. I got to give... LeBron credit when he does stuff like this because this is just a really cool thing to do and you know I give the man props um, respect so we're going to move now we didn't do a what would have happened in the last couple shows because it's been kind of busy shows we had some guests on but just me today so we, we need to fill some time so I figured we'll do a what would have happened like I said we do this every now and then we take a, a sport a sporting event something that happened and we say you know what would have happened if that never happened how would that have changed the landscape? And we've usually done, you know, we did Elway, the Elway trade. Um, you know, we've done some late, earlier, you know, stuff, stuff that happened a long time ago. But we're going to do something that happened this year. And I know this would have, this probably would be better, you know, a couple years down the line. But I got some good stuff for this. So what would happen if the Minnesota miracle never happened? So everybody knows, like I said, Stefan Diggs. Caught that pass last second. Marcus Williams, the safety for the Saints, missed the tackle. He was able to run down and score at the last second, giving the Vikings the win and sending them to the NFC Championship game. I was sitting here in the same space I'm recording this right now, in my room, in the base. I was sitting here on my couch watching that game, thinking so I was so happy because the Vikings weren't going to the NFC Championship game. I really liked the Saints, um, and I was really happy because – Case Keenum's a guy who's not going to throw a Hail Mary to win the game. And I was I thought it was over. Once the found when that pass was thrown, when Stephon Diggs caught it, I thought it was over because I thought Marcus Williams, one of the better young safeties in the league, was going to make that tackle or Diggs was going to step out of bounds. But credit to him, he did not step out of bounds and he was able to score uh, cleanly. There's no controversy there. So what would have happened if that never happened? You know, how would that have changed the NFL landscape? I know this is young, it happened this year. But obviously, if he didn't catch that, let's say, let's just say he didn't catch it, okay? Um, or we can say he caught it and Marcus Williams made the tackle. Um, the Saints would have moved on to the NFC Championship game, and I think the Saints would have beat the Eagles. I know that's crazy. Eagles are really talented. Nick Foles and Doug Peterson, you know, that was a really good combo in the playoffs. Um, I know a lot of people doubted the Eagles, but I think the Saints were the best team in the NFC, and I think they could have beaten the Eagles. Um, and they would have went to the Super Bowl with the Patriots. Now, what would have happened with the Saints-Patriots Super Bowl? I think the Patriots would have won. As much as I really like you know, Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Marshawn Lattimore, I think the moment would have been a little bit too big for these young guys. And I think the Patriots, Bill Belichick, and Tom Brady would have gotten that win. Um, and that would have given Tom Brady his sixth Super Bowl, uh, which would have... Easily, he's obviously the most accomplished quarterback of all time, but I think there'd be no discussion there because um, there's still a little bit of discussion. Um, but I think that would have solidified him as the all-time great. And here's something that would have happened. Tom Brady would have retired. He would be over. He wouldn't be playing another season. He would have walked away with six Super Bowl rings, which is insane for one guy to have six Super Bowl rings who, you know, starting quarterback even. And I think he would have stepped away. Um I think he really wants one more Super Bowl. I think that's what's holding him back from retiring right now. Um, he's still playing at a high level, but I think he would have stepped away at the height of his game, uh, winning a Super Bowl. I think he would have taken a step back and just you know said, you know, six years, I think I'm going to move on. And the Patriots would have, would have traded up, I think, in the draft, and they would have taken a quarterback. I don't know who they would have taken. I know they were interested in Baker Mayfield. Would they have made that trade for the number one pick? Who knows? And then next thing you know, Baker Mayfield's a, a Patriot. Where who do the Browns end up drafting? Do they draft Josh Allen? Do they draft Sam Darnold? You know what happens? It could change the whole landscape. So if you think about it, just because Stephon Diggs caught that pass, just because Marcus Williams missed that tackle, it changed everything. 
Baker Mayfield might not even be a Brown right now just because Stephon Diggs caught that pass. And that's insane. That's that's really the snowball effect right there. Something really, really small happens, and it changes the entire landscape of sports. Um, that catch, if Stephon Diggs wouldn't have made that catch, Tom Brady, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, might have retired. And that's I know that's a big leap, but if you really think about it, like I said, Saints win that game. They, I think they beat the Eagles. I think the Saints lose to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady's got six rings. He retires. He's got enough now. Um, pay, Patriots need a new quarterback. They trade up. They got two first-round picks this year. They trade up. They take Baker Mayfield at number one. Maybe the Browns take Josh Allen. I don't know who they would, what what they would have done. You know, with three first-round picks, they could easily moved up. Um, and we can dive into that as deeply as you want, but. It's crazy to think that, and I know, you know. Obviously, we don't know. Eagles still could have won that super, still could have won that game versus the Saints, and they could have beat the Patriots again, and nothing really would have happened. But in my opinion, I think the Saints would have beaten the Eagles. But we'll see um, what happens this year. Like I said, Saints are one of my favorite teams. I think they are easily a Super Bowl contender. And then Tom Brady, if he doesn't win this year, you know, I don't think he's got another year left in that body. You know, I know, you know, I know, I know he does that TB12 method, but I think Bill Belichick's kind of getting a little tired of Tom Brady. I think Bill Belichick really wanted to move forward with Jimmy Garoppolo, who's going to be a really good quarterback this year for the 49ers. We'll get into that next show. Um, and I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but we're going to move now to question and answer. It's fantasy football season. Fantasy football season's coming up soon. I know a lot of people are doing mock drafts. The idiots out there are doing the uh, who have already done their draft. You know, obviously, don't do your fantasy football draft before preseason starts. I know it's tempting. I know you get excited. You really want to get into it. Uh, you got that sleeper, that one guy you really want to draft. I had Kareem Hunt on my list last year. He was taken before I got him, uh, but that would have really helped out. Um, so that was one of the questions we got. Was, when should I do my fantasy football draft? I'd say as late as possible. If you can get all your buddies together and really wait until the last minute, I think that's the best time because you really don't know what's going to happen. You know, you draft Aaron Rodgers. No, I'm not going to say that because I don't want to do. I don't want to jinx that. You draft. Leave. Then we'll do. You draft. I'm trying to think. Your AB. You draft Antonio Brown with the first one of your first picks. Let's say fourth game of the preseason, his last play, he something happens and he breaks, you know, a finger or something, and he's out four weeks. You know, you don't want that to happen. You really don't want that to happen. So I'd say you wait as long as possible. You wait as long as as long as you can. Obviously, with time scheduling with everybody in your league, you obviously can't wait, you know, to the last minute. But uh, wait as long as you can. I know it's tempting, but just wait. You know, and obviously when you do it. You, know, you got to have the draft board. You can't do it online. I know online computer ESPN draft is easy and it's fun, um, but make sure you, you you do it right. If you're doing it with your friends, get a big draft board, throw a big party. Uh, that's that's way more fun than just going on to ESPN, you know, on your couch and just doing a quick draft. Uh, put some time and effort into it. It's fun. That's why fantasy football is so big because it's you can make it really fun. Um, and you know, put the work in. Study your sleepers, and you'll be fine. But obviously, wait until the last minute. Don't do it right now. I wouldn't even suggest doing it after the first week. I'd wait till at least two weeks in. You should be safe by then. Um, but wait for that. At least wait for that first round of training camp injuries to come through. Because I don't think it's over yet. I think you know. Wait till the end of this week, and then you can finally start. You know, moving on some of those sleepers. Uh, so, last question we got: basketball question. We talked about LeBron earlier. You know, why isn't LeBron being accepted by Laker fans? You know, I love LeBron, like I said, he went to the Lakers. He will, he left a franchise who I know Cavs fans, they would give their home for LeBron James if he would have stayed. He the LeBron fan LeBron um and Cavs fans, that's one of the t- tightest relationships in all sports. They they love him so much. People who've been supporting him for him ever since you know he got drafted, they love him so much in Cleveland. And it sucked that he left. I don't know why he left. He went to the Lakers. Obviously, there's other reasons. I think other than basketball, he wants to break into Hollywood and stuff like that. And you know now he goes to a franchise who's had greats like Kareem, Magic, Kobe, Shaq. You know, 
Cavs have never had somebody like LeBron. They don't have that Shaq, that Kobe, that Kareem. They don't have all-time greats. They have guys who are good and whose jerseys are retired, but they didn't have a guy like LeBron. And to leave Cleveland hurt really bad. I don't know why Cavs fans still support him because that was just a terrible look for LeBron. And that's another reason why I don't like him. So will they ever accept him? I don't think so until he wins a championship. And I don't think he's going to win a championship for a couple years. Um, and, you know, a couple years down the line, where will he, where will his game be? I don't know. He surprised me in the past. So I think he's got to win a championship for them to accept him. And once they accept him, you know, maybe it will be a little bit better. But LeBron left a great situation in Cleveland in terms of off the court. Obviously, on the court, he had some problems with getting players, fighting with guys. Uh, he was just frustrated, and he needed to get out of there. And the Lakers somebody he's really wanted to play for for a long time because I think he wants to break into that Hollywood game. Um, but we'll see. Obviously, right now they're not accepting him, you know, throwing paint on his mural that somebody took a long time to make. That's pretty sad. But uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think he'll, I don't th- I think he'll be accepted. I don't think he'll ever become close to being, you know, as loved as he is in Cleveland in L.A. Um, but that's it. That's that question. I answered that for you. Keep sending in those questions. But that's it for our show today. We want to thank you to our sponsors, D's Home Cuts and A's Lawn Service. Uh, we ask that you go on iTunes. Please give us five stars, rate, review us, and subscribe. It really helps us out. Um, even if you know you don't listen each week, you should. Uh, you should just please just give us a subscription. Uh, subscribe to us. Give us five stars. Review us. Uh, tell us what we can do better. You know, go onto our Twitter. Our DMs are always open. Uh, find us on Twitter at TNT Sports Talk Twelve, all lowercase. You can. Our DMs are always open. Like I said, even if you don't follow us, send us questions you want us, us to answer. Send us um, criticism. Send us stuff you like, stuff you didn't like, stuff you want to see more. Uh, we're just trying to get make this into a you know, the best show that it can be. And it, we really can't do that without your guys' help. You know, the listeners really give us, you know, a lot of help. Um, and if you want to be a guest too, we, we, we're still looking for guests. Obviously days like today, uh, we're trimming, you know, cancels on me at the last minute. And, you know, it's hard for us to find a guest at the last minute. Cause you know, a lot of our guests have other stuff going on. Um, so if you want to come on, you want to give us your sports take, you want to tell me, you know, I'm full of shit about LeBron. You want to tell me, you know, that the, Falcons are going to go, you know, 16 and 0, whatever. Come on, debate it with me and Truman and you know we always love good sports talk. So come on to our show, send us a DM, whatever you want. Our DMs are always open. You can listen to us on 12 ounce tomorrow from 12 to 1. Uh while you're there, buy some merchandise. 12 ounce is a great sports up and coming, you know, sports talk radio station. Uh listen to some of the other shows, they're pretty great. Uh you know, if you can't get enough, you know, of sports like me, you know, that's a great place to go. Uh, so, and you can find us on our YouTube page for our Android guys out there. I know it's hard to listen to. Find us. We're still trying to get on other platforms, but YouTube's a great spot right now. You can listen to us, plug us in while you're chilling at night, uh, and just you know catch up on all your sports headlines. You know, impress your friends. Uh, but that's it for our show today. Like I said, I thank you for bearing with me for you know the full hour. Uh, I know when Truman comes on, he only talks for like a half hour, but you know I really want to put out a good product, so you get the full. We're at 50 minutes right now, uh, but thank you. I want to thank you for bearing with me today. It's not easy coming on here and talking for 50 minutes, so send us a DM. We were, we're looking for more guests, looking for more interviews, uh, and we got some big things coming in the future. But for right now, I want to thank you. Have a great day. Watch the trade deadline. Follow Ken Rosenthal. He's the Woj of baseball, and really. Uh, Watch closely because there's going to be some big names move today. Big names move today. Indians, Bryce Harper, he's out there. He's going to help. He's going to add some uh, some power to that lineup. So go ahead and do that. Uh, but uh, thank you. Have a great day. And tune in on Thursday. Sherman should be back, and we'll hopefully get a guest in. But other than that, tune in on Twitter for that announcement. Have a great day, guys, and see you on Thursday.